This video includes a paid promotion. Hello. In part one, we discovered some interesting things about nitinol. First off, it doesn't like to be cut. And it doesn't like to be forged. It cracks under the hammer and the press and oxidizes prolifically. Even when we encased it in steel to keep air out and heat in, we still couldn't shape it without breaking it. So I ordered some pre-flattened SM100 nitinol ready to use, no forging required, but it turned out to be warped. So I sent it back to the distributor to make it actually flat and sooner or later, mostly later, got a semi-flattened piece of SM100 back in the mail. I think we can work with this. But first a word from our sponsor. Thanks to Olight for sponsoring this video. I want to show you their 1800 lumen M2R Pro flashlight. It comes in this swank box. It has six power levels and a 300 meter throw. It's wicked powerful with a 5,000 milliamp hour magnetically rechargeable battery. It has easy to operate dual switches and a crowned bezel for self-defense. Check out how well it works outdoors at night. Here it is on full power. Uh, yeah, it's pretty powerful. So <laughs> Olight makes great flashlights and starting today, July 26th for a limited time, olightworld.com is having their biggest sale so far. Get 20 to 50% off site wide with no discount code needed. And you get this crazy little X9R single LED flashlight as a free gift with each purchase. If you miss the sale, you can still use a coupon code green B for a 10% discount all the time at olightworld.com. That's green B discount code 10% off. Check out their sale in the meantime, guys. First, I'm going to trace out the shape of the knife that the customer wants his night and all blade based on for sizing. Then we'll have to flatten this piece somehow. I do have a surface grinder attachment for my old grinder seen in the video coming up in a few seconds, but it relies on a magnetic strip to hold the piece being ground in place. Nitinol is non-ferrous and non-magnetic, so I'll have to glue it to something that is magnetic to flatten it and put it on the surface grinder. Great, so the first side is done. We're gonna glue up the second side, take that to the surface grinder and get it flat. And we'll just cut to when that's done. I've drawn the shape of the knife on the piece of metal, night and all, again, and it's time to go cut out the profile with an angle grinder. Then we'll put on the old two by 72 and get it profiled perfectly. So I got this profile and I cleaned it up on the surface grinder a little bit and I haven't used the surface grinder a lot recently and I forgot some stuff. So <laughs> when, the, when the grinder's coming across and you go onto or come off of a piece of steel, it makes sort of an extra deep divot. It, it digs in a little more. If the wheel is coming, you know, from here to here, it's, it's full on contacting metal and so that offers more resistance. If it's right on the edge, there comes a point where the wheel's sort of half on, half off, and it can dig a little deeper than normal. And as best I can tell, what I've done to mitigate that in the past, it's I take shallow passes with a sharp belt, and you just keep doing the passes until there's hardly any other material removed, and then you go down a tiny bit, and you just keep doing those shallow passes, and you can mostly get rid of this stuff. But the easiest thing to do is to just make your steel longer than you need. You know, make your handle an extra, you know, half a centimeter longer, and that way the divot happens here, and then you can just cut it off and you don't have to wrestle with this. 
We'll get this thing painted up with some machinist dye. Then I'm going to scribe a center line down the edge and we'll mark the sides where we want to drill our fastener holes. Even though this nitinol is not hardened, drill bits won't do much to it. So I'm going to take it off to the mill and we'll finish these holes with uh, carbide end mills. While we're on the end mill, I'm going to cut out some areas to lighten the handle and achieve better balance. I'm not going to show you all of that process because it was long and drawn out and I burned up three different mills doing it. The mills cut very well to start but just all of a sudden they just quit cutting after a few minutes each. They become dull to the point they do very little or, or break suddenly. It's a bit of a disaster. We're getting it locked tight into a carbide file guide that'll help us set a plunge line that's equal side to side. Then we're gonna start grinding in our bevels. The sparks are so bright that I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna to try to add tape to hide the sparks and let me look down at the area where the belt meets the knife and, and see that area a little better. It sort of helps, but I have to dip it in the water enough that the tape tends to come off, but I, I, it still helps. As you can see, a sharp belt, a fresh belt, actually cuts pretty nice on this night and all. The problem is the belt wears down really quickly and even small amounts of wear on the belt make it ineffective. That, that belt was, you know, I ground a side and a half with that belt and all of a sudden it wasn't taking any material off and I put on a fresh belt and it's good to go. But that belt that I took off that wasn't removing material, that, that is, it's still a sharp belt. It's still very good for a steel knife. It, uh, it's got a lot of life left in it. So I think it's very interesting. Um, this project's gonna chew through some belts. I sent it off to Peter's Professional Heat Treatment Services after emailing them to check and make sure they did SM100, and they do. And yes, I made another knife from the second part of that night and all flat bar that we've got. That yellow is a very thick layer of oxidation and it's quite soft. It'll have to be removed when we do our finish grinding. No problem. And I could finish the project on my Ameribraid Fastback Grinder. I got this halfway through this project, and it was it's just a night and day for my old grinder. You guys need to check Ameribraid out. Handle scales, you guys want to see more handles. So I got this handle material. It's resin and aluminum online. Looks pretty cool. I've never used it before, so let's give it a shot.
This is a step off drill for the Corby bolts. The scales are sanded to a thousand grit and then buffed on a wheel with white compound. There's no way I was going to try to hand sand the blades, so I had them sandblasted. And I was told that the 80 grit garnet had a pretty difficult time finishing them. It took a lot of extra effort apparently. So there's no way I'm going to try to hand sharpen them. I'm just going to belt sharpen them and put them on a uh, work sharp, which does a really good job. It's interesting that the knife, it feels really sharp. It took a really, what I would describe as a keen edge. Uh, but we know from the chart in the first video that night and doesn't really hold a great edge. It's sort of marginal with edge retention. So there it is. What do you guys think? After about $60 in grit and belts and more than that in end mills for each of these knives, I think never again.